trailer sailors. Welcome aboard my Sea Witch. I'm out and about, I'm using it, so things are in a bit of a mess. Um, it is all in order, but a little bit messy. You know how it goes when you're out and about. So it's September the 9th, and we're in a heat wave. So I'm in and out of the sea all the time. Um, absolutely love it. There is no wind whatsoever. So there's no point in me being out sailing today. I've had a few requests from people asking how I rig my boat. So that's what this video is going to be about today. I'm going to show you exactly how I rig everything. Now please bear in mind, I am self-taught. I have never been on any sailboat, including this one, with anybody else in my life. On a motorboat, yes, I've been on motorboats many years. Sailing, in the grand scheme of it, is new to me. Um, I've self-taught through the internet, reading books, the RYA course that I've done, um, but I've never actually been on a boat with anybody else. No one has showed me what to do. It's all been trial, error, and experience. Um, I've changed a few things like what I've done along the way. Um, so I don't know if what I'm doing is the best, but it works for me. I get around, I get out and about, I'm out a lot, I enjoy my boat. Nothing I've done has ever put me in danger as far as I'm aware. Um, except for one time when I jived in a really strong wind and it jived downwind and that had the boat right over. But other than that, um, everything has worked for me and I tweak things along the way. Whether I change what I'm gonna show you now, further down the line is yet to be seen. But I'm gonna start from the jib, then I'm gonna do the main. Um, and I'm going to show you how all the halyards that I'm using work as well, what knots I tied, how I splice them, um, what knots I use the most. So all will become apparent in this video. So without further ado, we'll start from the jib. Let's get started. Here we go. Okay, so this is the top of my Genoa. I've pulled it down to show you. Um, that's the top of my roller furling, and that is how it's attached. So, this is the Plastimo roller furling. I forget what number it is off the top of my head, 406 or something, I can't remember. Um, but this is the halyard that I use for it. Now, this was second hand when I got it. I can't splice second hand braid on braid, it will not happen. So, I've put a thimble in it and I've whipped it. And that seems to have done the trick. That goes onto there. Underneath the top of the Genoa is just shackled onto the roller furling. And all the way down, oh, it's hard to do with one hand. I've, I've used slugs. I've got slugs on it. Probably better to use the bolt rope up in the track but this already came with these already attached, so that's what I'm using. Um, I haven't got a problem with it. Some people say that it doesn't pull, pull up tight enough, but it seems to work for me. Now, this halyard runs up the outside of the roller furling, up through a pulley at the top, and then it comes down through the center of the mast and out through here. So um, I'm going to pull my, I'm going to pull the Genoa back up. I'll have to change over to the GoPro because I can't hold the phone and do this at the same time. So let's give it a try. Right, so let's pull it up. Let's stand up for this bit. Just making sure that the halyard above the roller furling isn't twisted around the furling, which it hasn't. Just check again. That's it, and we want that as tight as we can get it. Put that back into track. And then 
put that around there as tight as we can. There we go. Alright, let's coil up the excess. Hang that back on there for now. Right, oh, see, a little bit of a breeze has picked up. Okay, now to roll that in, I've got this other one here that leads back to, to, to the cockpit. All we do is pull on that one and that will roll it down. Let me hold on to this to keep it tight. I'm only doing this here because it's easier to show you from where I am. See, it's not gone up a bit and straight. That's it. What I'm looking for here is that the UV strip is covering all of the orange. Up, up the top it wasn't. In fact, a little bit further down it's not, but that's okay. Leave that there for now. We'll pull that in once I'm back at the cockpit. Now, I've got the sheets here, port, port and starboard sheets. Let me show you how I fix these. I've used a soft shackle. Hopefully that won't unwind. Now with this soft shackle, I've whipped it. Now this is 10 mil braid on braid mat and the soft shackle part I've used is 8 mil braid on braid mat. The mat when using as a sheet is much easier on the hands than the gloss smooth finish. Um, so all I've done with this is I, to make that loop, is I whipped that section there. About a section there, about that big. Um, and then, once I've whipped them two together, where I needed it, I then placed the eight mil over the top of the whipping and whipped it over again. And that's worked lovely. The difference being what I've done is the end of the eight mil, to stop it pulling through, I burnt the end and then flattened it. So it has like a mushroom end. That way, no matter how tight you pull that, it is not going to pull through. This is 1.5 mil waxed thread. And it's done me fine. It's never pulled out. It's never let go. It's done perfectly. Right, that's on way on one. Let's oh. undo that one. One more time. Ugh. Where did this breeze come from? There wasn't no breeze earlier. So the loop goes through, then I take the 8mm with the knot on the end, put it through there, and it's done. Pull it tight through, and that's how it is. Okay. Let me show you that close up. <laughs> that is how I've attached it on. I don't think it's going to show from now. Um, but that is what it looks like. Starboard and the pole. Okay, right, let's go back to the cockpit so I can sort out this line here for the roller furling. I'll show you what I've done here. Now, ah, this is mistake number one that I made when I put this in. I should not have put, let's see, let's pull that tight, there we go. I should not have put this here really i need this up here or up here where i can reach it easily from the cockpit and i'll tell you for why 
when I'm on that starboard tack and it's healing right over to this side, to release this is okay. I've just got to pull on that and that'll release. But to get it back in, once I've reefed in or whatever I'm doing, I've then got to lean over here to put it back in. And already the boat is leaning right over to the side. Not that I like the boat leaning over, but it happens. So really I need this up here and it will be moved. And I'll probably put like a little fair lead or something on here just to guide it through. Because as you can see, this line, when I'm reefing in and out, when I'm pulling the when I'm pulling the jib in and out, it is actually wearing away the fiberglass on the edge here. So I will put a fair lead on as well. Okay, and then this one. simple um, the two sheets uh, comes out of the car Let me show you this side comes out of the car from up the side obviously it goes up entirely the outside you want it outside of the stanchions and um, your stays comes through that car which you can move forward and back depending uh, where you've got the wind on the boat. I tend to keep them back when I'm heading into the wind and I need them forward when I've got the wind behind. That's the way that I found it. I take two turns round here, one or two, and that will cleat in the jammer there. Um, now, with these windless, they ride down. This rope will ride down because you haven't got a straight pull from that car. I was on a Sea Witch Valley last year and I noticed and I saw that some other Sea Witch owners had like a wooden plate made that brought it out and then on there they put on a fair lead there so you didn't get that riding turn kept it kept that sheet on the drum good idea something that I'm working on I haven't done it yet I've got by without it but it does need it so that's another little project for the winter maybe okay um, nothing much more I can show you for the jib so yeah the sheets are here in the cockpit the roller reefing is on the back of the cabin and the actual halyard to pull the sheet up is strapped to the mast. That's the jib. Right, so onto the main. Now I've got the roller furling boom. It rolls around the boom if I want to reef down. Um, doesn't seem to be a popular choice by most people. I haven't got the slab reefing on my mast on, on the sail. I get on just fine with the roller reefing. I only use the roller reefing to reef. I don't pull the mast up and down by turning the handle and getting it spinning all the way round the boom to bring it all the way down. I'm not doing that, no way. I concertina the sail down um, and then I use bungees around it to hold it, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Me being the cheapskate that I am, um, I make my own from bottle tops. I don't buy the ones in Chandler's, one, two, three pound each, whatever they are. Oh no, thank you. Um, I do like a shoestring, so I'll, I'll show you that. Um, I have the lines behind me here leading back to the cockpit. So let's take a look at my main.
Okay, another thing to show you is the main sheet. Now this is in its stored condition. I'll coil up the excess and I'll just trap it between these here. So here you've got the jammer underneath. Now this is all the original. That is the original sheet from when the boat was new. I need to replace this and I won't get around to it. Another job needs doing. Um, but it seems quite good and strong at the moment. Um, so this starts off up on that top block there. This is like an aluminium crimp. Now this is as it was, see if I can get it out the, out the sun. So it starts off in the middle on that kind of shackle thing there. Runs down to the main block. Goes around the little pulley. Back up through that big pulley back down to the back of that big pulley and comes out on that jammer there so you can just easily get it in and out with that so that's the main sheet um, i just normally leave this coiled up when i'm in use on top of the locker there so this is my main this is how I leave it when I'm anchored up. Um, when it's on its mooring and I leave the boat, then I put a boom cover over it. Um, but when I'm actually out, this is how I leave it. Now, all my lines come back to the cockpit. So here we have, this first one is for the kicking strap. The second one is for the topping lift that green and white one. That's the one that goes to the end of the boom here. And I then have the red one that pulls the sails up and down. They all come to here. Now these, these run through jammers here. And then through, take a walk up here. Da, da, da. Then through these pulleys just so I'm getting straight pulls for where they need to go. Um, so what I'm gonna do is raise the sail now. We have had a little bit of a breeze blow up, so hopefully that's not gonna prove to be too much of a problem. Um, but I'm gonna raise the sail. First of all, I'm just gonna show you what I've done at the top here. Now, this halyard, I've got the thimble, then a shackle, and that goes onto the um, sail itself. I do them all up. I do all these up with like a key as well, a shackle key. I make sure these are nice and tight. So these, this is one that goes up. This sheet, I've, I've spliced it and then I've put a whip around it as well. Um, this was a new sheet when I got it, so I was able to splice it. But I always just put like a whip around there just to make sure it holds. That goes up the outside of the mast, up through a pulley, down through the centre of the mast, and that comes out here. Oh, if I can get the sun out of my eyes, there. Through this block, and then leads back to that clutch there. Now, the kicking strap. That starts off here, again, spliced with a whip. Oh no, it wasn't spliced, sorry. No, I couldn't splice that because this was second hand. So I couldn't splice that braid on braid. Um, so I've whipped it on with a thimble and that's a shackle onto that block. It goes up around that block, back down the larger pulley at the bottom, back up to the top, back down through there across here through that block leading back to that clutch there okay now the topping lift which is that green one that goes from come back again whipped because it was second hand and then not spliced that goes through I've got one of these here shackle onto the end of the 
gooseneck? No, that's not the gooseneck. It's a roller furling anyway. Um, that goes up to the top of the mast. That comes down the outside of the mast. Through that pulley there. Through that pulley there. And then back to touch there. Okay, so I'm going to pull the sail up. Might be a little bit difficult with this breeze, but we'll give it a try, see how it goes. Hopefully I'll put this in a place where you're going to be able to see it all when that stay isn't in the way, but we'll see. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is to lower the boom down so it's level. I keep it up when it's not in use so I can stand in the cockpit without banging my head and I can get in and out of the co cockpit easier, not the cockpit, the cabin easier. So I'm going to lower down this one. That horizontal doesn't have to be exact unless you're reefing then it needs to be more exact. Then I pull on the main sheet to tighten it. Stops it waving around. I take my kicking strap, release it out the clutch, and pull that one tight, and put the clutch back down. Okay, that's all now tight. Next thing I'm going to do is remove the bungees. Now these bungees, and I'm going to show you one now, is just a bottle cap, coke bottle, two holes drilled in it, some bungee put through, cut to length, not the end, job done. I've lost a few of these over the side. When I've gone to put them on and you're stretching them around and you let go and it fires out and it's over the side and gone and you can only watch it go. I think once or twice I've managed to grab it with a boat hook before it's finally disappeared out of sight, but generally these go. So these are sacrificial in a way, not that I like throwing things over the side of the boat because I never do that. Um, but by the time I'd got the anchor up and gone round to go and get it, I'm never going to find it. So, right, okay, so let's take off these bungees. Like I say, it's rolled a furling, but not rolled around the boom. So I'm going to take the halyard. Oh, look, I've left one bungee on. This one up here stops the halyard from slapping. So you don't get that ting, ting, ting noise at night. Here we go. So. Anchor bolt. Just watch it as it goes up. Put the clutch down, hold that tight. So, as you can see, I've got a reef in it. It has rolled around the broom. Because last time I, I was using it, it was quite windy. So I'm now going to undo the whole lot and unreef it. I've got the handle, by the way, I've put a ball in case it does go over the side. I've never lost one yet, but we never know. That goes into the
right, I always take the handle out afterwards as well. I never leave it in because it's only going to go clop. Okay, so now it's all slack again because I've unreefed it. So, undo the clutch, pull on that. Strap. and then I can see from there whether I need to raise or lower the boom so if I release the main sheet I can pull the boom up so using the main sheet I can pull the boom down that gets the leech tight or saggy depending on where I need it to be like I say, I'm not greatly experienced I don't know where the best bit is. Right, so the end of my sail comes up through this eye at the end. If you can see that. Comes through there and then back through a little jamming block there. If you can see that. That's how that end's done. The other end is pretty much the same. I did use to use shackles, but I don't anymore. I've just got a piece there, goes through, a piece of that three strand braid, goes through here, and then through this little jammer here. And the excess I've just bagged up and put on there. Now, my reefing, I've got the reefing claw. So that comes off of the kicking strap, through a hole in there. Let me loosen it off the top. Okay. So it goes through a hole, and there I have a knot, stop knot, a figure of eight, which then goes up to the end of the boom, through that shackle, back the other side, runs back down and ties off there. That keeps the reefing claw where I need it. It stops it riding too far along, too far back. That's about right there. That's where that is now works for me. I don't know how far that is away from the end. Uh, not as far as my elbow from that drum there. Not as far as my elbow. That works for me about there. Okay, so that's how that does. Oh, my boat is actually moving. Look, look at the weed on my anchor chain. Oh, gonna have to go in for a swim in a minute. So, yeah, that's that one. Right, I'm gonna bring this down and I'll show you how that's done. Right, so for me to bring the boat into the wind same as when you're taking it up keep the boat into the wind I can see by the water there this is actually trying to drive the boat through the water um, so what I do is I release the main I get my bungees ready got a longer one there that goes at the front the rest of it doesn't matter through my arms. Right, so and then I'll place it down, hold it down, hold it down, fold it, fold it and fold it. these 
where I put these determined is determined by the battens. Because I want to keep the battens flat. So next along this one. Feed up if the kicking strap or the main sheet is locked. That one now, that one now, done. So, this is the equipment I use for my ropes. Now, for the braid on braid, I use these splicing tools. They're not cheap. I can't remember how much I paid for them, but they were not cheap. But they're a necessity. Um, you get several different sizes in each one basically it's just a stainless steel tube cut out each end little hole in one and this is what you use to go in and out of this braid on braid with um, basically you pull out the core from away from the end and you pull that all the way out so you've only got the sheave in, and then you go through it the instructions on how to do it is all in here um, that is a necessity that's a must-have really if you're going to be splicing your own um, I've got my fid here I call it a fid I'm not sure if it is a fid or not actually but that's what I call it so when you're doing a three strand splice I might have one there already to show you yeah I have Here's a splice that I've done previously. Um, so yeah. Right, so here's a splice that I've done. Not very neat, but this, I don't know what material is, very difficult to splice really. It's so, so, I mean look, you don't even need a splicing tool for these. It's so soft, it really is hard to get, I find, to get a neat splice. But basically that is how I do that one. That is what I use for free strand. For my whipping, I use the waxed 1.5mm. I will use the thinner one on smaller material. But for any of the kind of braid on braid that I'm using, the 1.5 is ideal. I do keep a needle and some thread in case I very rarely needed it very rarely the only time really I need this is when I'm splicing um, sometimes I use this just to splice it just to thread it together just a few threads in and out just to stitch it together a little bit to hold it that's if the tape won't do um, that's why I've got the insulation tape sometimes when you undo the three strands it will keep going unraveling and I just use that to hold it where it needs to be sometimes I use this one like when I splice together when I splice together the braid on braid like when I made that loop for the jib sheet I would put a couple of stitches in there and a couple of stitches in there to hold them then I would whip it um, so yeah, these are the only tools that I use. Ah, this is the other, oh, what a godsend this is. A rope cutter. Now I used to cut with a really sharp knife and then hold it over the cooker flame. Which does a great job, no problem with it at all. But this rope cutter, that does such a fine finish to the rope. It comes out like that. No blackening, no charring never come undone the finish the actual cosmetic finish on one of these is better um i love it it's not a necessity it's quite a lot of money for what it is really um but it 
does give a nice finish to the ends of, of, of your ropes and sheets. So, okay, um, knots. The three main ones that I use is a sheet bend, a double sheet bend, a reef knot, the bowling, um, and that's about it really. That's about it. Oh, and a, um, a rolling hitch, a rolling clove hitch. Um, that's the other one that I need, that I've needed from time to time, but that's only when I've been running a trawl behind the boat. That's the only time I've ever used that one really, so not applicable to this sailing. Um, but other than that, those are like my main knots, really. So any questions, anything more you need to know, please let, let me know. I hope that's answered the queries that I've had. I've covered what has been asked of me. Um, whether I've covered everything, I do not know. So yeah, I'm gonna strip off now and go in for a swim. Enjoy the rest of your day, enjoy the rest of your holiday, whatever it is that you're doing. Hope you've got the heat wave where you are too. I'm going in for a swim. Ciao.